I know it's been a little bit of a hiatus, but of course it gets a little busy every once in a while. So last time we talked about the Grand, the 03, the big 30-06, the heavy hitters and everything, but not everyone really needed that. If, for instance, you were on a machine gun squad or you were a higher up or mortar team or something where you didn't need that much firepower or even a bazooka team, for instance, you would probably be issued something along the pistol. 1911, for instance, that was the common issue one. Obviously, it started in 1911, uh, back in the, World War, uh, the First World War, and this carried on for quite some time afterwards. Now, don't think of pistols in the modern sense, because at some point it became common issue to have both a primary and a secondary. That was not the case back then. When you were going out into the field, you were issued one weapon, say a Garand, or Carbine, or a BAR, or something along those lines, okay? So when I say something about a pistol, make sure you realize that is more for sec truly secondary usage. Here's the thing, they're not exactly light, and the heavier something gets, your kit for instance, uh, what was the phrase, ounces make pounds, pounds make pain. So you don't want to have a ton of weight on your body at any one time, because if you're going out for a full weekend or even longer for a tactical, you have to carry everything, it's going to weigh on you after a while. So with that, Pistols are an option, however, think really carefully on your position within your reenactment within your unit to make sure that you're making sense with that, actually carrying one. So the carbine came along at some point to fill that gap between just a pistol and a full heavy battle rifle. And it actually, when used correctly, does the job very well. It's only 15 rounds compared to the eight of the Grand, and it's a much smaller cartridge, but this thing is so much lighter that you can carry it for a whole lot longer and not have to worry about it. Especially if you're carrying a mortar or a bazooka or a machine gun, you don't want to have a heavy rifle on top of that, okay? So what I have in front of me is two different carbines. This is actually a Denix, so this is completely dummy. There's no ability to fire or anything like that. The biggest things you want to look for is lack of bayonet luck. There is almost no proof of any bayonet lugs actually making it to any combat before the end of the war. If I, if I remember correctly, there's like one or two photos that may or may not be Pacific, uh, Pacific, excuse me, Pacific policing action. Safety and the sights are something that's a possibility depending on what era of the war that you're at. This is not going to be a deep dive into exactly what you want to look for your collector's version of the carbine, all right? But those are generally speaking the way you want to make that work. No 30 round magazines, don't do it, just don't, okay? Now, as far as usage, these things, like I said, could be your primary, it could also be your crew served weapon option as well. As far as configuration goes, you could do the buttstock pouch if you are so inclined. Both of these have it. Now, if you look at a little bit more of the research, chances are less than half, but still a good amount of them did actually do so. I do it because the fact of, I will probably be driving a Jeep around and I'm, or just bouncing around trying to take care of things. I want to have as much ammo as I possibly can on tap in case I'm removed from my equipment. It's very rare, but it has happened on occasion. There's actually a video of me in a battle, no belt, no canteen, nothing just with this right here, my rifle and my magazines. Trophy pistols, they did exist frequently enough, but keep in mind you will probably won't get resupplied on ammunition, so it's really more of a trade token. You don't necessarily want a big old broom handle Mauser sitting on your hip as you're going into a battle, all right? Uh, last thing is the different pouches. There are potentially, which I have never actually tried, magazines that can fit inside of a standard M1 Grand style cartridge belt. I have not tried it, but I believe it has happened in the past. Primarily, you're going to want one of these two, or pockets, or bags, or something along those lines. This is the more traditional style. You've got the big belt loop right here. It's even got a snap to go on your uh, pistol belt. The one with the eyelets on the bottom, they only have loops, not just the big old slot. Those are more of a late war type thing. I believe it was considered a universal ammo pouch, but it's really designed for the carbine. Yeah, this one even is dated 1944. So with that, now you have a lighter option.